guys, welcome back to the full one on tech. As you mentioned in our last video, the review of the iPhone 13 Pro Max, I wanted to have a video where I can share my experience with you guys on the switch from Android to iOS. So I'm gonna talk about the transfer process and some pros and cons. So we're gonna get into it right after this. the transfer process. So there is an Apple app, it's called Move to iOS, and you can download it on the Android Play Store. And so I, I did that, I installed it, and I was going through the process, and I immediately had issues. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I did some research, and there was some recommendations, make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi, of course turn your phone on airplane mode with Wi-Fi. I did that, it wouldn't let me do it. So I was just experiencing a lot of difficulty and long story short, I was not able to go through that process. Yeah, so it would just like, uh, you would get through the process, it'd be kind of going along and it would just fail. And we kind of did some research and it said, like if it gets to like a, a large photo or something, it's probably gonna fail. And we tried it a couple times and then it, it started failing. So then we started looking to some third party tools. Yeah, and there was a number of those. We we just tried one. Uh, right. I think it was any trans. There's quite a few trans, like any trans, phone trans, mobile trans. There's a couple of them. I think it was any trans that I tried, and it seemed like it was gonna be a you know a good app to use. But then when you get to the part where you're about to transfer stuff, you, oh, you have to pay a fee now. Like yeah. if you want to transfer everything. And then even with PayPal, it says something about like, do you want to set up a re automatic recurring payments. fee or automatic payment? So yeah. like that we opted out of that. Yeah, so again, so there is third party apps and hopefully for most people, the move to iOS will work. I mean, it's supposed to be a smooth process and with that, you can move your contacts, even move your text messages. So that's really nice. And once you complete the process, which again, I didn't experience, but from research, it should then prompt you if you have apps that are also available on the Apple App Store, then you can re-download re -download that. that. Yeah. Um, so if it works, it's great, but you know, if it doesn't work, there's issues. So what I ended up doing is, you know, I just accepted the fact I'm not going to be able to transfer, you know, all my stuff. I was able to, because I have, you know, an Android phone, I had all my contacts and my calendar and stuff, obviously in those Google, Google apps. So I was able to easily transfer those just by going into the Apple settings and then going to the calendar or going to the contacts and then you just add another account. Yeah. So I was able to do that. So I got my contacts, I got my, you know, all my calendar events and everything like that. Only thing I really didn't have that I wanted was my text messages. Right. But you know, I still have my phone so I can always go back and look at those. Right. So that, that, that was just kind of the transfer um, experience, how, how it went for me. Um, hopefully it would go smooth for everybody else, but like the main tool you can use is move to iOS. Yeah, if anybody used like any trans or phone trans or mobile trans, let us know in the comments down below like what the process was like and like when you paid it, was it like really a recurring payment? Because I hear that it's a good app, any trans, but yeah, just let us know in the comments down below if anybody's or used it. if you know an app that is actually free, completely free, where you can do all of it. Again, we didn't do a bunch of research, right. I kind of just was done after that point. I just want to start using the phone. I just yeah. wanted to start my yeah, start yeah. using my phone. But even with with that, you know, again, if the if the move to iOS, you you can get most of your apps. Uh, it'll automatically re-download. But you still have to go through the re-downloading, right? Mm -hmm. All your apps, you have to re-download them, which also means you have to re-sign into them. So if you don't remember your password, you have a bunch of different passwords. Um, that's kind of like a little con that you know the transition to. Android to iOS, so that's one thing to know. All right, now let's talk about the cons. I actually want to talk about the cons first. That's just the way my head works right now. One of the main cons that are not, I mean, I guess you can call it a con. It's something that I miss is the always on display. I love having the always on display. I can just look, I can see the time, I can see what notifications I have, what the date is, what the weather is. This. I see nothing. Right. <laughs> um, and it's kind of unfortunate because I feel like they can do it. I mean, they, they do it with the Apple, Apple Watch, right? right? Um, and with the battery on this thing, like, 
you know, it shouldn't take up a lot of battery. Yeah, not a lot of pixels are, are lit up, it's just a black screen. But right, and it's text. OLED, so yeah. you just have the pixels that are lit up. Right, it should be low power, low power mode, doesn't have to be full resolution, like, you know, good enough to read, yeah. but yeah. So I, I really miss that. Um, you know, I'm constantly trying to look at my iPhone now and try to figure out what time it is, and I don't have that. So that, that's one con. Also, it doesn't show your battery percentage at the top, you know, like on an Android phone, um, or even on the, I, the iPads, like it'll show yeah, the battery percentage. Yeah, you gotta go into the control center, swipe down on the right to see it. But yeah, it, it's it is not nice. the worst. Um, yeah. And I also have, you know, you have the widget, you have, but th that takes up space. I mean, I have it, but it would be nice if it was just right there in the corner. Right. So that was a con also for me. And notifications. So notifications on Android, to me, are much, they're more- Manageable. They're more manageable, they're better grouped, they're better, you know, like you have more functionality and kind of like features, so to speak. As far as like reading them and getting rid of them and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, so like, you know, with, with the Android, you also have, your notification icons at the top, which I like, and you can, you know, see that. I like that, you don't have that with the iPhone. And they're also, like, notifications in the notification center on the iPhone, they're not grouped as nice, so it kind of shows you, like, I guess your most recent, but then they also have, you know, older notifications, and then you scroll down and you see those. And then for Twitter, for example, like I have a couple of different groups for Twitter, whereas, you know, on Android, it's just more better group. Like it's just all your yeah, Twitter. Yeah, you like the way it's grouped better. Like yeah. Someone it, else may like the iPhone way better. Yeah, and a lot yeah, of this is preference, yeah. right? But again, I'm just sharing my experience with you, what I'm liking, what I'm not liking. So I definitely like uh, the notifications better on the Android. Now there are some things that I do like a little bit better with the notification. So for example, Twitter, for example, um, on the Android, if I have like several Twitter notifications and I'm trying to, cause I'm, I'm one of those people, like I can't have like notifications. I don't like the red dots saying I have this, like, yeah. like I have to get rid of them. So with um, the iPhone, like it'll let you scroll through all of them. Whereas on Android, you kind of have to do like a, you, you have to start getting rid of some of them to, to see yeah, to see them all. Yeah. So that's one thing that is nicer on the the iPhone. But again, like I still like notifications better on the Android. So I am missing that a little bit. But they have Apple has gotten better with the notifications with grouping and stuff like that. So hopefully they'll continue to get closer to what I like and what I have ex right. experienced on the Android. Another thing that I'm missing is. Uh, your, you know, your keyboard. So it's a small thing, but for example, the, the layout is just different. So like the at symbol on the Android is on the left, where it's on the iPhone, iOS, it's on the right. So it's just kind of getting used to that. And you can uh, download third-party keyboards, like you can even get the Gboard, uh, but it doesn't change the format of, you know, your numbers and letters and all that stuff. So, you know, that was kind of a downer for me. But again, it's not a huge thing. So I'm just kind of now used to it. Yeah. Uh, another thing, and it's not a big thing for a lot of people. For me, it was a big thing, split screen. So Android, you can split screen. I can have two apps, one on top, one on the bottom. I use it a lot, you know, if I'm trying to do the grocery list and I have my list and I'm trying to get it online at one of the grocery stores. If I'm trying to like do bills and stuff like that, I'll have a calculator up and then my banking app. So split screen was a big thing for me. I really enjoyed that. Uh, you can do it on the iPad, so I don't, I'm not sure why they haven't done it on an iPhone yet. I mean, maybe they think it just doesn't look good or there's not enough real estate to do it on an iPhone. It's not Apple optimized. It's yet. not when Apple. When they do the split screen, it's gonna be the right way. Right, right. Right. Later, later <laughs> Late, down the road. Later down the road. <laughs> Uh, and another thing, spam call blocking. I just feel like it's a little bit more features. Or you have more. Yeah, like the call screening on the Google. Like so, when someone calls, you call, and you can like, you know, have a whole conversation with just like saying, "Tell me why you're calling." You're yeah. like 
Can you tell me a little bit more? I still don't understand that whole like call screening thing. It, yeah. it's, it's pretty, I so, like that. Yeah, if you get a call, you can hit screen call. And I, I like it. To me, it's, it's just, a game. it's a game. Like yeah. I'm roboing the robots. Right. <laughs> so that's or the nice. spammers. And just that, yeah. you know, you're not a person answering. Cause sometimes when you, they know that you're a physical person, they know, okay, that number is active. Right. Um, and then you just, you don't have to interact. You don't have to answer it. So. Spam calling on Android with Google screening is amazing. Um, and obviously with iPhone you have, you know, you can block, I think, any unknown, you yeah. can block certain numbers, but there's still not as many options. Yeah, and if you block all unknown, you might miss some calls you're intending to get. So they have like, right. Apple has like the nuclear option, like block all like unknown numbers, it's not like in your thing. And you'll, <laughs> yeah. you'll probably be missing calls, but you can use like third party, um, Third party apps to do like some of the spam blocking. I think you're allowed like up to two. Uh, we yeah. gotta play around with that to see. Yeah, what... we have the AT&T one. Yeah. And that seems okay, but even that is like to get more features, you gotta pay for yeah. it, right? It's some carriers are better uh, at blocking, uh, blocking spam and stuff from even getting to your phone uh, than others. But yeah, the call screening that Google has is just, it's awesome. So yeah. whenever I decide to upgrade, whether it's going to be an iPhone Pixel or a Samsung or whatever, that'll be we weigh heavily, <laughs> yeah, heavily on my mind. Yeah. Yeah. So another thing is picture in picture for YouTube for the YouTube app. Now did some research. So just recently, I think this year, you are able to do picture in picture on iPhone if you have YouTube, YouTube Premium. Premium. Yeah. Um, in that same article that I found it, I think, I believe it's the end of this month or next month where it should be available for, you know, if, regular, if you have just a regular YouTube, um, account or membership or whatever you want to call it. So that is coming and it's something that we use a lot, like even just like driving to work, like we'll have a GPS up and then it's nice to have like, if we're watching a YouTube video, which we do often, it's just in the corner. We're listening to it because we're driving. You're watching. Well, I, or, yeah, yeah, the driver's not watch. watching. But, yeah, but that's nice, and even just doing it. At yeah, home, or like, just we'll do it. Yeah, just like doing the picture in picture, having the down there. You like get into another app, do some real quick, and then you full screen it back, so you can hop in and out of apps while the yeah. YouTube video is still playing, it's because you need that consumption of video. That's right. Yes. And then another thing is. So we found it harder to transfer photos, videos, you know, your files off your iPhone to your PC. Again, this should be an easy thing, right? right? So, you know, with Android, you just plug it in. Pop-up comes up, you say USB file transfer and bang, you boom, just, you're done. You know, go to your file explorer and trans, you right. know, go to your DCIM folder and you can just pull it all out and transfer it onto your PC. It was letting me do that with the iPhone, but then we ran into and I large think we, files. Yeah, if it, if it runs into large files, which it, this was our last video, so we did like a lot of um, you know videos and photos on this. So we had some large files, and I guess it was just getting hung up on that, so we couldn't do it that way. Then we tried the iTunes the way. old faithful like iTunes method. A brand new phone, new install of iTunes, and I immediately, I don't know the exact error, but it was, it's a common error. You gotta error. restore your phone. Yeah, like, like immediately you have to restore your... Say, nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do yeah. that. And we tried, we watched a couple videos, we tried to do some workarounds, still didn't work. Tried a third party app, and, you know, it was supposed to try to fix the iTunes thing, and that wouldn't work, because, you know, iTunes was just not having it. So... I think then we tried to, so you can do iCloud.com and log in that yeah. way. And it has your photos, yeah. Access it, which we ended up doing, which, you know, once you finally figure out the, a way that's going to work, right? Like, so going forward, it's iCloud.com for us. And that's not bad. You go on there, you select what photos, and you download. Easy enough. But again, getting to that, like, which option is going to work right. here? And then we even tried the method the where. The DLC, yeah. DLC app, and you create like, um, a local host like network and that's you put that in a browser and then you can pull files that way so there are a couple ways to do it but it's just not as easy as you know plugging it into your computer yeah. and then it becoming like an external drive and pulling stuff off now i'm sure if you had a mac it would be 
A okay, right? Okay, <laughs> probably, probably, but a PC not so much. So yeah. yeah, that was a little cumbersome. Yeah, definitely. All right, still going down the list of cons is no USB Type C still. You know, obviously you have it on some Apple devices. You think now with the Pro, it being a Pro phone, you would have USB Type C, but they still haven't trans for transitioned over yet. Hopefully, maybe. 14, yeah, maybe 15. Yeah, maybe down the line. I don't know, but I do miss that because, you know, USB-C, we already have so them with Android. That, it's very universal. Yeah. And you can get quicker charging. You can transfer files quicker. So, you know, it's definitely a downer that it's still lightning. Right. And I think some of the Androids, you know, with USB Type-C quick charging, I mean, you can charge those pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our Pixel 2 has a little yeah. old, so it doesn't charge that fast, but like the newer ones, you can charge pretty Yeah, I think some are like, I want to say like 60 watts, so don't quote me on that though, but yeah, it's a, yeah. Lot, it's a lot more than 20. Yeah, so charging this a little bit slower, I mean, for me, it's not a huge deal. I usually charge my phone when I go to bed, so it's, it's definitely charged. done in seven, eight hours. And the battery lasts long, so that's good. Yeah. But, but it does take a while to charge. It does take a while, especially if you're trying to do it quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so another thing is customization. So I'm sure everybody's heard it, Android, you know, customization, that's like the first thing you kind of think about. And that's kind of one of the reasons why we switched to Android, you know, with, when we went to the Pixel 2s. But looking back now, we didn't use it a lot. Like, so you have widgets, obviously you have widgets on iPhone yeah. now, but there, you have more control, you can do more with the widgets. Yeah launchers and things you can get custom launchers yeah to make it like where with the apple we just have the, the launcher that they use and that's it right so but we yeah we did a few things but we didn't really go as no. as customizable as as you can do but it is Android. nice to have the option it is nice to have the option. one thing though when we're talking about customization that i did use and i enjoyed is just being able to move apps like wherever you want them so like i can take this app and i can move it over here anywhere i want it so if you have like a nice picture you know i have a picture of damien and i on here i want to not hide our faces i can move the apps anywhere on the home screen ios you can't do that like they just they stay in line so that's one thing um but again like we didn't really use the widgets and like launchers and stuff so it's not a huge huge deal but if it's you do just, like a lot of yeah. customization you're gonna be missing out some. Right, yeah, but there, Apple has, uh, you know, with iOS 14 and 15, they did add widgets back. It's, you know, there's a little bit more customization, but not on the level of the Android, but there is, there is some cus more customization. Yeah, so Since like, the last time we've used it. Right, yeah. so now you can like, when you download an app, you can, in the settings, you can say, you know, don't put it to my home screen. And now you have the app, like an app drawer, finally. And it kind of like organizes the stuff yeah. for you. And I'm a very like clean per like I don't want like a lot of apps on my home screen, like right. pages and so pages. So the groupings is key for you. Well, and just having that app drawer. So I don't right. have to have them several pages on the home right. screen. Right. So that that's definitely a right. plus. All right, so enough about cons. Let's talk about some pros. One of the main pros for me and why I decided to go back to iPhone, iOS, is the ecosystem. Right. Okay? So I already have an iPad. You know, I, I've always liked to have an iPad as my tablet. To me, it's like the best. Um, a tablet, yeah. For yeah. Sure. And then, you know, obviously you have the MacBooks, the Macs, you have all the apps and services that Apple has and it's easy you have airdrop you can transfer stuff like when I was going through the transition of transferring between the two like I was airdropping stuff from my iPad to the iPhone and that was super easy right. and you know if you have like the airpods or the airpods max you can be listening to you know on your phone and then just yeah, pick that, up your iPad and yeah. then now you're on your iPad listening yeah, definitely that tight integration between us. So if you have like an iPhone and iPad and like a, a MacBook Air or Mac Pro or MacBook Pro, you can work across like uh, different workflows across all those devices and have them, you know, just pick up where you're working on the iPad and you can go to uh, your, you know, your Mac Pro or your or MacBook Pro and just work on that. You have yeah. the watch, you can integrate with the, the you know, with the, the phone. Plus yeah, the phone. So. So that whole ecosystem, 
you know, it's, it's very, it's very good. And it's why, you know, a lot of people uh, don't like to leave. It gets you hooked. Even if there is more <laughs> customization out there, but that ecosystem is everything just so tightly integrated yeah. and a seamless process, uh, you know, it's, it's just, that's, that's a really big uh, selling point for Apple there. Definitely. And, and you really like, you know, like that aspect of it. You I know, do. it just works aspect. It just works. Yeah. I was out and then they got, they, they they got me back, back, back in. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, another thing is apps. So apps are just like smoother. They just up, up, a little bit more polished. They're a little yeah. more polished. Um, just for example, like my banking app. There's like there was some more features. It was just more refined. Right. Um, we have a Synology, so like we have like DS Cloud and and apps like that, and they were always kind of not great on the Android. They're functional, but, they're not, functional. but not very like highly polished. They're not highly polished. Yeah. And I also got like a lot of cra app crashes and stuff like that. Not to say it doesn't happen on iPhone because it does. It's actually already happened to me with the new phone, but not as often as with, with Android. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're picky with like developers and, and just the whole process of creating apps and stuff like that. Yeah. and. For like for the Apple, like developers have to develop for iOS and that only works on you know the iPhone. Right. Where yep. Android has got to work across multiple different types of hardware. So you know th there's more things for you for developers have to think about and for the to, to, uh, to you know make these apps work on. So it's more hardware for them on that side, and that might be why the apps are the. You know, some of the apps aren't as polished possibly on Android as they are on Apple. Yeah. And battery life. So it just seems so again with the, the apps, they're just, uh, they're more optimized. They're more, I guess, refined where is, you know, sometimes you get a lot of stuff on the Android store and sometimes stuff isn't always efficient. So it'll like hog up a lot of your battery, right? Yeah. Uh, so battery life tends to be better on iPhones for the, for that reason and other reasons. So, and then, you know, just the battery on this alone is crazy, right. you know, long. It lasts a long, long time. So battery life, again, just seems to be a little, little bit better. Um, another thing, longer support, software support. Like we're talking, what, four? I mean, I have the original iPad Pro and I'm still getting current. Updates. I'm I, still I think current. it's either the iPhone 6S or iPhone 7 is still getting updates to iOS 15. So, yeah, you, know, you get a long-term support. Yeah. yeah, we're already, no more updates on this. Yeah, four last December phone. was the last update we got, so. Yeah, where yeah. is, you know, iPhone, iPhones and other Apple products seem to have longer support, which yeah. is nice. All right, another great thing with Apple is privacy and security. So, for example, apps now ask you if you want them to track you or not. And now you also have these new features with iOS uh, 15. You can hide your IP, you can have a fake email address, so you can use that to, like, you know, if you're signing up for some Banana kind of Republic service. or yeah. something like that, some kind of service where you don't want to get a bunch of junk yeah, so it can be more anonymous. Yeah. yeah, so more anonymous and then the security, you're always hearing about, oh, this app in the Google Play Store right. is malicious or, you know, and not to say it's more secure, it's just more people are going after and, that. And Android is, is, is open where yes. iOS is closed, so and with that openness, program. more people make, you know, make exploits for it because it's an open platform. Right, and and Apple is, again, very Clear. tight yeah. with that, develop, like who they allow to develop apps and the whole process is just definitely more- Tightly controlled. Yeah. Tightly controlled. So yeah, privacy and security is definitely nice. And me being in like network security, like that that's a big thing for me. So I, I've been enjoying the additional privacy and security with that. And car CarPlay. So Android Auto is nice, um, but in my experience, even with with the past when we had like iPhone 6 or whatever, to me, in my experience, CarPlay has just been more stable. Uh, Android Auto, we had quite a few crashes. There were some other issues that we had, and then you know I got fixed with a with an update. 
But yeah, you know, and I, I feel like there's a couple extra options that I have with CarPlay that I didn't have with Android. So CarPlay, I've definitely been enjoying yeah, it. I think one of them was like the music wouldn't play while the navigation was on with the Android. I can't remember, I think it was maybe something like that. Maybe. And we like to listen to a lot of audiobooks and we sometimes Yeah, and I think that finally like got fixed. But then it got fixed, so. And that, that was, was earlier. Like, that was earlier, phones, yeah. So yeah. yeah, I mean, it's been a while since that's been fixed. But you know, just all in all, I, we personally, I think both of us like CarPlay. We, we've been enjoying that a little bit better than Android Auto. And then another thing is just some of the camera features now with the iPhone uh, 13 macro mode. If you watched our last video, the review of the iPhone 13 Pro Max, macro mode is really amazing. Yeah. Like for us, we're to get our B-roll and stuff, we're always using our phones. And a lot of times like we try to get in and get that real tight, like close up picture and it's just not happening. Whereas this thing you can get up to two centimeters. So we're definitely gonna be utilizing macro mode a lot. Um, so that's one pro for us yeah. with the pro phone. <laughs> one thing what we didn't mention or I wanna mention as far as like camera stuff for Android, you can do uh, 360 degree photos that's and you can do the Google Lens. Yes. And you can do Google Translate. So when we were in some place where they weren't speaking uh, you know, English, we could just hold a Google Translate up to the foreign language and it would translate for us. Yeah. So, that, so there are a couple a couple I mean, of things with the, the camera. You I mean, can get like translate now as in like if you have the watch, you can even do it like yeah, translate with the, the Google, watch. The Google Translate is boss though. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> but like for like like you said, but for taking pictures and video, the iPhone is, is pretty good with that. So we'll yeah. have to see what the Pixel does and the and, you know the uh, Samsung S22 Ultra when that comes out. But yeah, the, the 360, 360 degree photos, the translation, and the Google Lens are kind of things that I really like on the Android side. Yeah, and and with iOS 15, now you do have that. I forget what they're calling it, but they have like the Google Lens thing now, where you can take live text. Live yeah, text. Yeah, live yeah, text. So, they're they're getting there. Yeah, you can copy the text. I, you know, I don't know about them to translate. Yeah, we haven't text. used it too much. Yeah. Um, we're definitely gonna be trying that out and using that more. But yeah, I, it definitely that's an, that's another thing. And another big thing. And for, another thing <laughs> for, for the for the Android, the Google Assistant way better than Siri. Yes. <laughs> I mean, there's been surveys of like I don't know, like fifty thousand questions and like. You know, the Google Assistant gets like, you know, 80% right and then like Siri doesn't like answer half of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I assume so she's gotten better. She's gotten years. better, but yeah, she's, she's no, she's and no Google Assistant. And sometimes Google Assistant, she has her struggles too. Mm, yeah, not as much but, as Siri. Yeah, I agree. I do yeah. like the Google so, Assistant. Yeah, I just want, so yeah, I didn't want, I just wanted to make sure I brought those up. Um, but the messaging app on iOS. Yes. That's so a, cool. You can yeah. make payments in it. You got the animojis, the, the me emojis. Oh my goodness. Like I made my me emoji and yeah, all excited that, about that. That is that's pretty like you had to upgrade to the messaging on Android. And I was like, yo, finally. And no, it's gonna and be it's like not, I'm a Yeah. It's it, not there yet. It's like, not there yet, yeah. It would keep on like And some of my messages was like, Do you want to send a regular SMS because the other one just wouldn't deliver? Yeah, because it would like some it I don't know how it dictates, but like sometimes it would be like consider it a chat versus a, yeah, a message. Yeah, and yeah. Again, it, it, it's just kind of been rolling out. So, you know, we'll work out, work out the kinks. But yeah, it's still not iPhone iMessage or iPhone message yeah. worthy yet. Yeah. But so those are the transfer process, the pros and cons, just in my experience. And then obviously you've been on this journey with me. You, yeah. you haven't upgraded yet, yeah. but I mean, this has helped you I'm out a lot. I'm just kind of standing back and like taking taking it all in yeah. to figure out what I want to do here. Yeah, so hopefully that helps you guys out as well. If you're trying to figure out, you know, if you want to switch from one to the other. And let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are. If there's some features maybe we missed or you know anything any questions that you might have you know we can test it out and try it out and let you know about it and don't forget to like and subscribe it helps us out a ton and we'll see you guys in the next one bye